Sorry, I, I just didn't, I didn't have anything to eat. I'm just having a little Cheerios, okay? And uh, sorry, Mom, but I just put a little bit of uh, sugar on my Cheerios. Your kids do this? Put a little, just put a little sugar on your Cheerios. You know, it's like soda. We were never allowed to have soda when I was growing up. Uh, and, uh, and if you have, if you have just two cans of soda uh, every, uh, every day, by the end of the month, you've had 10 pounds of sugar. So that's just like your kids having two bowls of cereal and putting uh, three and a half tablespoons of sugar on their cereal. At what point did mom say uh, enough sugar? I think it was probably before that. Just so you understand, 10 pounds of sugar, that's how your kids are filling their bowl if they have two bowls of Cheerios and would put three and a half tablespoons on there. That's what they have just from two cans of soda. I don't think my mom would be for that, and we need a dust buster. All right, let, hello America. Let me, uh, we're obviously gonna be talking about food today and some of the things that maybe we haven't really thought through. First, this is an important election, the most important election of our lifetime, right? I mean, how many times have I said that? I've, I mean, I've said that every election, like every three and a half years, I think I say. But the truth is, um, this time, <laughs> this time we mean it, this time people fail to really grasp where we are. This is it. This is it. For some of us, early voting has already begun. It all culminates in less than a few short weeks, you know. What, 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 can I ask, what does this election for you actually stand for? Those supporting Trump, what does this campaign stand for? Why are you voting for your candidate? Is it the border? Is it the economy? Is it war? Is it law and order? You know, or is it who we are as a people? Or is it social justice? Is it, you know, I want to stand for trans people's rights, which are totally fine after 18, but before 18, I really want to mutilate kids' bodies. What, what, this is the soul of the country. What did our founders believe from the very beginning? What was their intent? On February 14th, 1776, Thomas Paine added an appendix to his best-selling pamphlet, Common Sense. And if you've ever read it, it's one of the greatest quotes in American literature. I mean, to this guy was just scribbling it down on a piece of paper. This was the purpose of the great political experiment called America. It was the reason for the American Revolution and this new United States, okay? He said, we have it in our power to begin the world over again. A situation similar to the present hath not happened since the days of Noah until now. The birthday of a new world is at hand. The race of men, perhaps as numerous as all Europe contains, are to receive their portion of freedom. Wow. Let me just say that first line again. We have it within our power to begin the world over again. That's because they had some place to go. We don't. We have the opportunity to restart what our founders began when this all started. But I don't think you're starting this again any place because we're the last great hope. We got to go to space after this. We're not freeing men from the clutches of tyrannical rule through an overbearing monarchy. We can be the global standard bearers for freedom from the iron grip of that bureaucratic monarchy and or in our case, the deep state. The founders never anticipated where we are right now, and we need a course correction. Let me ask you, what, what is the main point of government? What is the main purpose of government? Most people would say, to keep us safe. That's what they're supposed to do. Oh, you're going to have a whole different opinion on keeping us safe here in a few minutes. The very top, that's what people would say. Modern Western government in the world, it's to keep people safe. But... We have kind of a unique uh, clause kind of attached to it. You know, our first coin didn't say, in God we trust. Our first coin said, mind your own business. So keep us safe, but mind your own business. Here's what the federal government is supposed to do. Provide for the common defense. Okay, we have an advanced citizenship. 
The government may try to weaponize under the guise of keeping us safe, but they may not interfere with how we run our families, how we conduct our business, what church we go to, what we say, how we choose to arm ourselves. Stay out of our business. The government, common defense, borders, wars, treaties, trade between the states and from the uh, other governments to unify, to, uh, to create a justice system, establish punishing crim criminals, um, protect the innocent, and justice should be blind to personal and political attack. That's, that's really it. That's, that's what the federal government's supposed to do. Everything else strays outside of the Constitution. Beyond these lines, it's an overreach. But here is another question. Wow, that's a lot of sugar. What happens when the government weaponized through the bureaucracy is doing the exact opposite of keeping us safe? What if they're not keeping us safe? In fact, they're knowingly doing things, but they're getting rich. Not only that, they're getting rich off of our misery. We found, we found out a lot about what is happening between the various arms of the federal government recently and their little inconveniently profitable relationship with Big Pharma back during COVID. Remember? You saw, you saw this here on this show first before anybody else. And I can still not believe that it didn't spread like wildfire. Maybe this is another show like that tonight, but we are ahead of the curve. This is a contract between the government and the National Institute of Health and Moderna. We showed you this years ago. The first signatures date all the way back to November of 2015, four years before the first signs of COVID. Big Pharma was working hand in hand with our government on mRNA coronavirus vaccines. And you can see from the contract who would reap all of the cash if the coronavirus ever popped up? Quote, mRNA coronavirus vaccine candidates developed and jointly owned by NIAID and Moderna. Now, this was signed in uh, 20, uh, sorry, 2019, December 2019, as a little virus in Wuhan began spreading all over the globe. I mean, wow. Can you imagine the profits involved for both the government and big pharma, if an mRNA vaccine were to suddenly get approved, imagine the profits. What happened to all that profit? The contract had that part covered. All royalties were paid directly to the bank account at the Fed. Now, I'm wondering if Thomas Paine ever envisioned a U.S. government that would work with giant pharmaceutical companies who would research vaccines for viruses that they would do dangerous research on. And then when the virus magically showed up and everything was going to hell in a handbasket, you know, some governments would weld people in and then the virus vaccine could be fast tracked. Bank accounts would be ready in the standby to uh, at the Treasury just to rake in all of the profits and you wouldn't be told anything about it. I think the founders might have found an issue there. Maybe a little conflict of interest potential at the expense of the well-being of the American public. But this is still a small part of the entire problem. And the federal bureaucracy is completely out of control, and it goes back decades. You know, you hear a lot of crap going on during election year, okay? But there is one issue that started blowing up like crazy a few weeks ago, and it goes directly to what I've been talking about and the soul of our country. RFK Jr. was one of its biggest advocates. Watch. We've grown now to accept chronic disease conditions as normal. But now, in 2024, we're finally waking up to this cataclysm and we're asking ourselves, how in the world did this happen? A big part of it is our diet. Restaurants that serve contaminated food are fined or shut down. But when it's the government that approves the poisons in our food, a few people get very, very rich, and the toxins end up in every supermarket aisle. Okay, hey, you might not think about, you know, uh, some things being poisoned, but it is poisoning America. Not only that, but the direct complicity of that poisoning by the United States federal government 
your mind is going to be blown here. Uh, and why? Well, it's happening just like NIH and Moderna, the contract there. Make a few gazillion dollars and our health be damned. The bureaucratic state claims that they are keeping us safe. But here is the state of American health. According to the CDC, our own CDC, an estimated 129 million people have at least one major chronic disease in America. Per the CDC, this began to get worse over the past two decades, and the trend is expected to continue. 42% of Americans have two or more chronic conditions. 12% have at least five. I never knew, I, I mean, we all as kids could have been in class and put peanut butter all over our faces and nobody in school would have had an allergy. American life expectancy now has declined to 76.4 years. That's the lowest it's been in nearly 20 years. These numbers are catastrophic and they're getting worse. One in nine of our kids are being diagnosed with ADHD. 40% of school-aged children and adolescents have at least one chronic health condition. In the year 2000, one in 150 children were diagnosed with autism. By 2016, 16 years later, that number rose dramatically to one in 54. Americans are being rotted to death, and there is nothing being done about it. We live in the most advanced country in the world. What is happening? Cha-ching. People are making money. As we go further in tonight's show, I want you to remember that the contract, I want you to remember that contract between Moderna and the U.S. government. I want you to remember the partnership between Big Pharma and bureaucratic agencies like the FDA. How do they not look at these health statistics and immediately mandate some kind of change? Nothing's been done. Well, perhaps maybe, just maybe, they're all in on it. And it takes a couple of outsiders to go, uh, excuse me, to shut it down. Is it possible the FDA is allowing poison in our food supply because the end results are just far too lucrative to let go? Consider this one last statistic before we cut for a break and I attempt to answer some of these questions. From the CDC, quote, about 90% of the annual $4.1 trillion health care expenditure is attributed to managing and treating chronic diseases. And also remember, also from the CDC, this. It is estimated 129 million people in the U.S. have at least one major chronic disease. Hmm. The trend is rising. Is there anything about what's causing it? Is the government to blame? And is it really all about money? This is the most important election of my lifetime. I think it's the most important election of our country's life. But it's more than just lowering taxes, reduce the spending, everything else we usually complain about. It is for the soul of our country, for the lives of our children and our children's children. You'll understand more when we come back. I still think I can eat it. Uh, let me talk to you about Jace Medical. The level of devastation from hurricanes, Helene and Milton, is still something we don't have a full grasp on. Almost 300 people are dead, but hundreds, hundreds are still missing. Over 2 million people are still without power as of this last weekend. As you might imagine, critical items like food and medical supplies are coming in really fast, but never as fast as it needs to be. It's for things like this that you have to be prepared. We rescued one woman off the top of a mountain. She wasn't able to get um, any kind of uh, antibiotic, and she needed it badly. She had had surgery. It started to become infected. We didn't get her to the hospital. She would have died. She needed an antibiotic. For that, Jace case could have helped her out. If she had a Jace case from jace.com slash Beck, it's emergency medication, has the five uh, strongest um, uh, antibiotics in there. So you just call the doctor and say, which, which do I take? 
uh, and you don't have to worry about it. You need to be prepared in every way possible. Go to jace.com, enter the promo code Beck at checkout for a discount on your order. jase.com, promo code Beck. Okay, so just, uh, just a few weeks ago, the idea that we're slowly being chemically poisoned wasn't really talked about all that much, but it exploded all over social media. And RFK Jr. deserves a lot of credit for that. His joining Trump is what really blew it up. Um, now, is it really happening, or is this just election year shenanigans? Let me show you these stats one more time. 129 Americans, one third of the country, have at least one major chronic disease. 42% have at least two or more. And 12% have at least five. Life expectancy has just decreased to 76.4. And the worst part is, it's getting worse. So now how does America, or indeed all of humanity, survive if this continues? Someone needs to find an answer for this. Someone might need to answer for this. Someone needs to look at what's being put in our food. And how is it getting in through past our agencies like the FDA? Well, let me show you an ad. Do you remember this ad from the Kool-Aid campaign? We're going to bring back the fun. The fun is illustrated by all those cute little kids with their tongue stayed with a dye of Kool-Aid's different flavors. I remember that from when I was a kid. But what makes Kool-Aid Yellow, yellow Kool-Aid, red Kool-Aid, red. What, what is it? Well, it's food dye. And it's in almost everything we eat, and for good reason, because it's not exactly a healthy additive. Per the FDA, I love this, uh, these uh, additives, color additives, are important com components of many products, making them attractive, appealing, and appetizing, and informative. So I think what they're saying here is a distraction. Food dyed is, is like the little uh, fishing lure at the end of the hook, that it never works out for the little fishies that bite into it. To give you an example of what we, including our children, are eating, I have a few different flavors of Jell-O, and I chose Jell-O um, because we should have known uh, Bill Cosby was involved with Jell-O. No, actually because in the 1980s, tobacco companies invested heavily in our food market. You know, the people who said four out of five doctors recommend you smoke this cigarette. So now they're into the food and the strategy um, is really, you know, really a, their strong point is getting people addicted to smoking. And that's what they're trying to do now with food, get us addicted to certain foods. A recent study found that many of these tobacco company owned food manufacturers focus on, and I quote, the rise of hyperpalatable foods, which contain potent combinations of fat, sodium, sugar, and other additives that drive people to crave and overeat them. That sounds like an, that's an evil plan. Jell-O is just one of those companies, and they use all additives to, that contain all those little shiny fishing lure colors that attract kids to eat them. Food dyes. This is strawberry jello, and it looks, and believe me, it does. It tastes delicious. It does. Um, the ingredients are all right on the back, and they're, you know, they seem pretty harmless. Water, sugar, fruit, juice, blend, um, concentrate, apple juice, concentrate, gelatin. You don't want to know what is made in gelatin. But here at the bottom is red number 40. And I'm going to come back to that here in just a minute. Red number 40. Um, now, there's, a, there's another... Uh, package of jello over here. This is lemon lime flavored jello. And this has something called yellow number five and blue number one. Then we have black cherry jello, which is even yummier. Uh, it's weird because uh, uh, looking, you're looking at red 40, but also blue number one. Now, all of these odd additives that are made up with stuff that honestly sound like stuff that you know can make Zyklon B are food dyes. Now, according to the NIH, the historic original source of these was, and I quote, coal tar and now crude oil, and their use raises serious health concerns. Over the past 100 years, food colors have been found to pose greater threat to health than any other category of food additives. Okay, all right, I don't, I'm, 
That didn't make me feel better. I'm slightly alarmed here. Oh, wait, here it is, here it is. In general, although, many synthetic dyes are regarded as safe in acute doses, the general view is that high levels of chronic consumption throughout life are not advisable. So I shouldn't eat this a lot, I guess. But I don't know, because that doesn't make me feel better. I, I, I mean, how much of that should, is okay? Then they go on. Unfortunately, as the amount of dye used in commercial products is often proprietary, it's difficult to assess, assess the dietary intake and determine exposure in humans. Oh, okay, wait. All right. So these dyes originate from toxic materials that's not advisable to ingest them at high levels. And with the large amounts used in all of our foods, they can't really determine how screwed we are. Is that the, is that the gist of the government's investigation and research? I mean, is this real? Let me go back to the Jell-O. Jell-O, strawberry, red number 40. The NIH stated the use of red 40 coincides with the rise of early onset colon cancer. Have some more kids. But they also state their research found that red, 40's, uh, red 40 also damages DNA. So not that I worry about there. More research shows that red 40 is also linked to ADHD symptoms. Now, if you're curious, well, that's just jello. What else is, has red 40 in it? Well, just these things. Me Lucky Charms. Oh, good. And Catalina Classic and all the juices and, oh, yeah, cherries, cocktail sauce, gum. Yeah, all of it, icing. Not Pop-Tarts. I always thought they were healthy because they had fruit in it. Okay, so let's look at lime jello. Okay, yummy stuff. Got a couple of additives, but more specifically, yellow five contains tartrazine. Now, tartrazine is not a big deal. It's just linked to liver disease, problems with the nervous system, DNA disorders, allergies, asthma, anxiety, migraines, and depression. This stuff is insane. Oh, by the way, it's restricted in places like Europe. But why not here? What else is it in? Almost everything. <gasps> not Apple Jacks and Velveeta. I always thought Velveeta was so good for you. And Cake, Cheetos. I mean, a little mental disorder wouldn't be all that bad, would it? Black cherry jello, blue number one. Now, studies show 52% of clinical trials found an association with ADHD and this stuff. Not jello per se, just uh, blue number one. Now, let me ask you something. How many kids that have been spontaneously diagnosed with ADHD? have been eating this stuff by the cartload, you know what I mean? And then promptly placed on expensive behavior modification uh, drugs. I mean, who's making money? Wait a minute, they, that's a chemical in there and those are pharmaceuticals. Hmm. Now, uh, obviously not just found in Jell-O, it is also the good captain has been betraying me. <gasps> the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man and cookies. How is this happening? Why were we not informed? Who's watching over our health? This is just one thing, one additive. There's a whole buttload more. How did it get past the FDA? That's probably gonna, well, your mood won't improve. Next. Well, you know what I love is that our nation, you know, is, unra is unraveling at the seams, you know. We might make w wake up one of these days in the not-too-distant future and uh, not recognize our country anymore. I mean, I haven't done that in years, but I mean the country that we have today, you know. For your sake and the sake of your family, prepare yourself. Be as prepared as you possibly can for whatever might come our way. This is where getting emergency food from my Patriot Supply... Don't tell me that they have food coloring. I don't think they do. It's all freeze-dried stuff. Uh, anyway, um, it can make the difference, all the difference in the world. Storing emergency food in your home 
right thing to do. We live in crazy times. And, you know, if you were in a hurricane, you could have thrown the, the packages right into the back of your car. And yeah, you have to go stay at a hotel, but at least you didn't have to feed your family as well. You had that all taken care of. Right now, you can get started by ordering a three-month emergency food kit from My Patriot Supply. Each kit can, it contains delicious foods, things like creamy stroganoff, honey wheat bread, mushroom rife pilaf. Uh, for example, the entire kit offers 2,000 calories every day and can last up to storage for 25 years. Hopefully, you don't ever need it, but you might. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com, order your three-month emergency food kit from My Patriot Supply. That's MyPatriotSupply.com. And it's just my... This is a very sad day for me. I love all this stuff. Why? Why? Fruit Loops. Come on, the little Toucan Sam, he can't be bad. He is. Deadly in high doses, like if I eat this whole box, which I might. Anyway, um, so how does this wind up in our food? How does it get to our, I mean, my mom would never let us have any of this stuff, any of it, never. Well, Jello. How did this end up on our breakfast table or dinner table? What happened to the government's mandate of keeping you safe? You remember that contract between the government and Moderna for mRNA? And that old vaccine thing. It's weird because you're going to find this eerily similar. So here's how it works out. Let's say I'm a food company. I, I'm running Beck Foods and I want to make some yellow, little yellow, yummy breakfast loops. Uh, and I want it neon yellow because it'll make the kids scream to their parents. I want that when they pass in the grocery store and I'm going to need some food dye. Well, that's going to need FDA approval on every single batch. Now, luckily, here at Peck Foods, I'm pretty close to the FDA. We're like this. You see, I pay the FDA's salaries through something called user fees. See, user fee. Here's the FDA. And there's a fence right there. You were not, I'll let me tell you, that site. Of course, I could get over here and I could get right directly to the FDA, <clears throat> but I'm, I'm paying them user fees, okay? And I do that so they can regulate the dye that I want in my cereal. Now you'll say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're paying the manufacturer, the guy, you're, pay the, you're paying the watchdogs to watch you? You pay their salaries? Yeah, yeah, that's the way it works, you know? Me and the other food manufacturers, we pay about 46% of the FDA budget. I mean, it's mostly big pharma who funds the 6,500 jobs at the FDA, but the rest of it's the food company, so we're good. What could possibly go wrong? What are you, what are you a conspiracy theorist? So anyway, I go to the FDA for approval, and they're like, we don't, we don't test any of that. So what are you talking about? You have to prove the food is safe. And you're like, oh my gosh. Wait, I can hire the scientists? I mean, they could have a clown wig on and a big red nose, and I get to produce the science behind this? FDA's like, yeah, because you're trustworthy, aren't you? Well, yeah, here at Beck Food, we're not poisoning the kids with that at all. We're not giving them ADHD or anything like that. I want to provide them with something wholesome that glows in the dark. And so I go to my clown scientist, and, and he says, it's great, you know? And he just, yep, it's great. Yummy yellow number five. And then I pay a bunch of money to the FDA so they can read that from the clown and then uh, rubber stamp it. Now, it's a beautiful relationship. I mean, it is a little taxing. I have to drive a lot of money to the FDA because... You know, they make the money giving the screaming kids their first box of yellow glowing cereal um, that makes them go nuts, you know. Uh, but, but I have to drive another truck full of money to the FDA every time I make a new batch. Then they have to say, well, did your clown scientist? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, he did. Boom. Money 
okay, you can make another batch of that cereal. That's how it works. This is how you get to potential chemical poisoning of Americans. Now, I don't know. This doesn't seem like a safety thing. You know what I mean? Uh, it really, it really doesn't. Um, I mean, if we look at it from the top of the chalkboard, you can read it for yourself. Quote, manufacturers are required to supply the FDA with evidence that establishes each chemical is safe at the intended level of use before it may be added to foods. Oh. Okay, so the burden of proof to determine whether or not their food is dangerous is actually the guy trying to turn his product into profit, not the government organization whose job it is to keep us safe. And remember, it's just for his food. He could be making all of these food, all these foods, but if he's only testing it for yellow number seven, no, that's not. But if yellow is in all of these, that might be a bit too much, wouldn't it? Wait a minute, is this going to cause cancer? No, for like, sure it won't. Trust us. By the way, did we show you our revenue projections for next quarter? And the FDA, FDA gets a lot of that too. Come on. Now, I would think the government would have some incentive to make sure we're not getting chemically poisoned. I'm sure it does. But I mean, money doesn't talk. It screams. Which brings me to the next part on the chalkboard, user fees. Again, read it yourself. Users fees, quote, the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, relies on funding from two sources to support its regular activities, user fees and budget appropriations and user fees paid by the industry. For food dyes specifically, quote, manufacturers pay fees based on the weight of each batch and these fees support the FDA's color certification program. Doesn't that sound like bull crap? Let's just call this for what it really is, okay? Because if, if I'm looking at this, let's say I'm a, I'm a cartel, not like a drug cartel cartel, just a mob-run cartel, okay? If the mob exists, which we all know it doesn't. And I'm like this cartel, and I'm like, I'm going to make food. Uh, I'm gonna make, in fact, I'm going to make cocaine for babies food. And I would just mix a little cocaine. Now, I wouldn't mix a lot in there. I just to write them out uh, for cocaine's, co cocaine so if they have this, the babies are safe. Now, not if they're eating it every day, you know, and eating other stuff with cocaine in it. But m my food is absolutely safe. So I go to my clown scientist and I'm like, Hey, can you write up something that says the cocaine is safe in baby food? And they're like, absolutely. How much money? You give them the money, they come up with a study, and then you give money and the study to the FDA, and the FDA is like, all right, cocaine for babies it is. That's a bribe. That's all this is, is bribery. The, manufacturing, the, the manufacturers who are putting these chemicals into our foods are the ones supplying the totally safe data. Then they pay for fees. And the FDA is like, that's right, we're not, I didn't see anything. Cancer, schmancer, I don't know what you're even talking about. That's a lucrative relationship. Strangely, as was the vaccines. In fiscal year 2022, user fees represented $2.9 billion of the FDA's total budget of $6.2 billion. Nearly half of the entire budget from the FDA is coming from big food and big pharma. Now, that sounds a little like a conflict to, of interest to me, but, and it doesn't sound like their primary concern is for your health, but more about their bottom line. Curiously enough, there has only been one presidential administration in re recent memory who's tried to do anything about any of these additives going into our food supply. I know you know which one, right? Jimmy, well, couldn't have been Ray, a, a click, click, no. Um, Donald J. Trump in 2018. Hmm. The only one. Boy, I wonder why they hate him. I mean, all those companies that just despise him, 
The people, you know, at the FDA and all of those agencies that just hate Donald Trump, I bet it's because of, ooh, wait a minute. Sorry, it's just so addicting. I bet it's because he's racist. You know what I mean? This election has so many implications. I can't remember an election that is more, ooh, hang on. I'm sorry, but it's the, it's the flavor. Um, wait a minute. That was blueberry, because it was blue. This one's orange choice. Tastes exactly like the blueberry one. This one's purple. And that tastes just like the orange one. I think this might be a scam. I know I've said this every election, and I've always said that I hate it, but it always seems like it is really, really important. This is not the most important election of my lifetime. This is the last election for the republic known as a constitutional America. Uh, and it's going to decide how our kids live, how our kids eat, how our kids make money, how our kids spend money. The left always likes to speak in hyperbole about their issues. I showed you the statistics just a minute ago. People are actually getting sick and dying. I don't know, I kind of care about that. Don't you? But it also goes to the soul of the country that I spoke about at the beginning of the show. We, we don't continue as a country that colludes with entities like Big Food and Big Pharma who are making themselves rich and putting shiny little fishing lures out that our kids get stuck on. We get sick and die. Thomas Paine said, we have it within our power to begin the world over again. They were open about the world they were creating. The elites in the world, they're not open about it. They've been lying to you about all of this. A republic, as Franklin said, if you can keep it, a republic is hard to keep. One that prioritizes human life over corruption and cronyism, human rights over corruption and cronyism. That's important. There are two people I want to introduce you to next that have been blowing the lid off this entire thing, and they're one of the big reasons why everybody is starting to wake up. You might have seen him on Joe Rogan, and I got to convince him to come on radio with me as well, but they're spending a few minutes just to, to show you what they found, and they were in the actual belly of the beast. I'll talk to them next. As we print more and more money, I think of Rudyard Kipling. There, we had plenty of money, but there was nothing our money could buy. It's hard right now to have financial peace of mind. Our country, our world, so much turmoil. Who knows when the next financial crisis or crunch is going to come down the line? Maybe the election will fix it. Maybe it won't. I don't know. One thing is for sure, the time to do something about, uh, about it is not once it happens. It's being prepared for the worst, hoping for the best. That's a virtue. If you don't see the need to shore up your hard-earned money with something that will act as a firewall against economic disaster, you're not looking very hard. Precious metals, in particular gold, has always been a safety net in times of looming economic trouble. Do you know that in the last two years, the price of gold has doubled? This is why Lear Capital is such a great choice. Uh, uh, they have $3 billion in trusted transactions, thousands of five-star reviews. They're going to put $250 towards your account if you just call them now and look for gold or silver, 800-957-GOLD. You might have seen these guys uh, around. They are amazing. Brother and sister who came straight from the belly of the beast. She's a Stanford-trained medical doctor. He's a former D.C. big food and big farmer, uh, pharma insider. Um, it seems kind of surprising that the two of them are on a mission to expose the corrupt players at the top level of the government and industry that is overseeing what Casey describes as a genocidal health collapse. I want to introduce you to both of them, Callie and, and uh, Casey Means. 
Casey, uh, welcome. Can you tell me what you, what do you mean by uh, genocidal health collapse? Glenn, what I'm speaking of here is the fact that American health is just getting absolutely destroyed. And the stats speak for themselves, but for some reason we are not talking about them. We have 74% of Americans with overweight or obesity. We have 52% of American adults now, 52% with prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. We have one in two adults expected to get cancer in their lifetime. Young adult cancers are up 79% in the past 10 years. We've got autoimmune diseases going up. We've got infertility going up 1% per year. 77% of Americans are now unfit to serve in the military. Across every aspect of our health, American health is getting destroyed, so, including in kids. But 50% of kids now have a chronic illness. And that's that's what I mean by a genocidal health collapse. And, and you know, we silo all of these issues in different specialist offices, so no one's seen the forest for the trees. And it's, it's a pretty bad situation that we're dealing with. So, you know, we've heard this because people aren't exercising, the kids aren't going out and exercising, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm sure that plays a role. But I never grew up with people that had allergy to peanuts. And now it's like allergies to everything. There's something else going on. So uh, when you when you looked at this and Callie, you're you were right there. You saw it firsthand when you looked at this and you saw uh, big pharma, big food uh, colluding with the government. You wanted to get out. What was it that made you say, I, I got to get out of this? Well, Glenn, I'm a conservative. I mean, I'm you know, I believe in personal responsibility and the idea that people should be responsible for their health, responsible for their weight, you know, makes a lot of sense to me. Right. But it was very radicalizing, right? On the one hand, paying tens of millions of dollars to literally rig the system to make soda the top item on food stamps, right? Right now you have tremendous lobbying making Ozempic the standard of care for obesity. That's sixteen hundred dollars per person per month. 80% of the country, you know, we incentivize ultra processed food, hundreds of billions of dollars a year. So we rigged the system and then we paid conservative interest groups to say that any questioning of that rigged system was nanny state. We weaponized the conservative argument, mm. you know, that doesn't want, you know, the government hands to touch anything after the system's rigged. So what, what my, what my wake up from, from learning from Casey was, is that of course, personal responsibility is important. But when 20% of kids, I think it's six-year-olds, are obese, you know, when, when, when almost 50% of Americans are be, obese, when 50% when of teens are overweight or obese, this is a systemic issue. Yeah. Uh, this is a rigged system. This is crony capitalism. Um, you know, parents in America in mass are not trying to uh, ensure their kids are obese, depressed, diabetic. Um, there's something happening here, and, I, and Glenn, I, I think it's I think it's what you've been unpack, unpacking for 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 so many years, and I, I think it's just a tangible representation of this this crony capitalism, co-opted institutions, that to me is really what's driving the MAGA movement, what's driving yeah. populist uprisings around the developed world. I, I think this is a real example of that. Yeah, I, I think our eyes have been open, especially on the conservative side. I, I mean, a lot of things liberals have been talking about for a long time. They were right, but they don't seem to care about it right now. And I was like, guys, we're finally here with you because um, it's 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 crazy what's been exposed. You realize this entire thing is a game and it has nothing to do with protecting us. And I honestly don't know how do you describe, you know, when you have almost half the FDA's budget coming from people who are doing the testing themselves and then paying the FDA, that's bribery. I don't know. I don't know why it's not called what it is. It's bribery. I, yeah, I think I think President Trump and frankly the alliance between President Trump and, and Robert Kennedy Jr. is a big realignment in American politics because yeah. I don't think it's left versus right anymore. It's I not. think it's the American people versus the uniparty. I mean, these are not really ideological things. It's just is it correct that it's actually seventy five percent of the FDA drug regulatory department is paid for by the pharmaceutical industry. And as we know, Glenn, you know, institutions in DC are built to grow. And if they grow with more pharma money and there's a revolving door where the FDA had continually goes to the board of a pharmaceutical company, those are the incentives. Can the USDA, is it appropriate for 19 out of 20 USDA nutrition guideline committee members, which create the nutrition guidelines for our kids? Is it appropriate that, that literally 95% of them take money from food companies, no. <laughs> processed food companies? 
This just isn't accurate. Is it correct that the CDC has a backdoor nonprofit where pharmaceutical companies can funnel it hundreds of millions of dollars, which they do? Is that appropriate? I mean, this is just simple corruption. And President Trump and RFK are the folks calling this out. But yeah, if you close your eyes in one of these rallies now, you wouldn't know whether you were at a left or right. a right. I mean, these are right. things people on the left were saying. And um, I know. frankly, that's what gives me hope. I, th- I think I think there can be a bipartisan unity here to get this I corruption so out too. of our institutions. I think so, too. I thought RFK Jr. coming to Trump and joining that, I thought, was game-changing. Same with Elon Musk. Absolutely game-changing. Um, so, Casey, I've always had a problem with GMOs because I grew up around a farm. And, you know, my uncle couldn't, after a while, he couldn't plant corn anymore because it was all being, you know, cross-pollinated. And, you know, (laughs) he didn't think that it was good that you you had to go to a store to buy the seed every year. Um, But is that is that the beginning of all of this was the let's feed the whole world? How did this start? When did this start? Yeah, I mean, as Kelly talked about, there's just so much corporate capture here of our institutions. We've convinced these institutions that it's good for America to really have total control of the safety of these seeds. We we talk about GMO like it's a good thing, but in reality, right. what are GMO seeds doing? They're allowing our entire cropland of the United States to be sprayed with toxic pesticides that are sold to us from other countries like Germany and China, which we spray a billion pounds of these pesticides on our GMO crops right. per year. And we're just absolutely decimating the life-giving nature of the soil of this country. There are, by some estimates, only about 40 uh, harvests left because we've so decimated our topsoil with these chemicals. The pesticides is just the tip of the iceberg. There are about 10,000 food chemicals allowed in the U.S. food supply that are allowed by the FDA to be put in our American food systems. In other countries like Europe, it's less than 400. And many of the chemicals that are in our food are actually illegal overseas. And so you can just go to the FDA website and look this up. There are unbelievable amount of chemicals that are hidden in our food. And so it's obvious that we're sick. Kids are eating 67% of their calories now from ultra processed foods that were made in a factory that are filled with these invisible, tasteless chemicals that um, in many ways are are like just thousands of drugs that are going into our food and they're mass poisoning our population. And And there is yeah. no there is no reason why other countries say no and yet we still do it here there's there's absolutely no reason for that 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 to me shows collusion of some sort i i would love to have uh, spend at least an hour with you guys could i invite you onto the radio program uh and and explo- ex- expose this to my audience uh in greater detail we'd love to do it yes. Glenn, Great. And thank you for drawing attention to this you bet you bet thank, thank you, you so much Uh, That's all we have time for today. Good night, America.